Hello, welcome back, Steve's Retirement Corner. What does your retirement look like? That's all that matters. That's all that cares. <laughs> and everybody has a different idea of what retirement means to them and their self. You know, it's they're all different. You know, everybody has a just like everybody worked a different job or bought a different house or a different vehicle. You know, it's really a well. I mean, I've said it before, it's a, it's a personal decision. It's a personal way to look at things. Whether you are uh, climbing the Matterhorn or traveling the South Seas or starting your own business, doing volunteer work or, or whatever. It don't make no daggone difference. You know, and it, but it's a hard thing to figure out because you're bombarded with so much daggone... Uh, <laughs> uh, dreams, <laughs> so to speak. You know, you just gotta, you gotta get it bullet down to what what you really are wanting to do. You know, some people want to do stuff they've never done before that they've always wanted to do. Hey, Amen, and that's great. You know, but it just uh. I don't know, you know, your retirement can be whatever the heck you want it, want it to be. I mean, you look at it, it's probably the first time in our lives that we haven't had a responsibility. We haven't had a, somebody else telling us what to do. And we got the money to enjoy ourselves to a certain extent. So, I mean, it's an odd time. And I think that, I, I think that having total autonomy over your own time and what you do plays into a lot of the fear of retirement because it's it's something that's brand new to you i mean you look me and the baby i mean <laughs> we don't have any bills you know there's no wolf knocking at the door telling me hey man this is due on the 15th this here's due on the 17th you know what i mean other than just your living expenses your electric and water and junk like that you know, there's nobody we're responsible for. We don't have little kids running around or college educations to pay for, you know, anything like that. You know, it's just me and her and <laughs> and that's it. You know, I've got no work to show up to. I don't have a time frame that i got to be there and, you know, I, I ain't getting called in. I ain't getting drafted over, you know. I mean, it, it, that, well, hey, man, on my daggone homepage, I put down there, or about page, or whatever the heck it is, one of these things on here, I put down there, and this was two years ago, December of 21, I put down there that it was a scary and uh, exciting time at the same time. You know, I've said before, hey, man, I, you know, after, you know, 40 years of that, well, not quite, I don't think I worked actually 40. Years 17 to 57 would have been 40 years, so 39. Let's put it 39. <laughs> I mean, I worked before then, but I was going to school too. It wasn't my only, uh, the only thing I did. But after 40 years of, of answering to somebody else and uh, having your time set for you and stuff, I mean, I tended to. Uh, to lose what really uh, I enjoy doing. You know, I did, either didn't have time to do it anymore, or my my tastes have changed over the years. You know, as you get older, all that stuff changes. You know, and there's some stuff I just can't do anymore. <laughs> I could do it, but one time, then be in the hospital. <laughs> but it's a, uh, you know, it's different for everybody. You know, and you know. I usually just talk on my perspective, you know, because, I mean, I, I worked in a factory the past 30, almost 35 years, I believe it was, of some kind. Man, I'm, <laughs> I made styrofoam insulation. I made uh, yarn, string. I made aluminum. I made uh, paper. I made chemicals. I think that's all the actual factories I worked in. So, I mean, 
I could see where somebody has total autonomy, autonomy over, that's a $10 word, <laughs> coming out of five cent brain, <laughs> autonomy over their time, you know, uh, maybe where the job's not, not so physical on them, it's not killing them, you know, I mean, I could see where somebody like that, that is, uh, would want to stay. You know, hey man, I worked with a mechanic over at the paper mill over yonder, just across town there. And uh, you know, I, I said before he, when I went to work here, it was after the string factory laid me off. I worked at a aluminum plant up the road there towards Richmond a little bit for a few months, and then I worked over worked over yonder at the paper mill for a few months. I got on at the chemical plant, and uh, but that that mechanic over at that paper mill. When I went there, them guys told me that, because I worked in the powerhouse, I didn't make the actual paper. I, I ran coal. I had to dump. I, I loved that job. <laughs> that was a great job. And it wasn't real taxing on you. I just had to dump two two car loads of coal at uh, a shift. And it, it went up the conveyor, went up to the daggone, the boiler, went into the boiler, or it went into a hopper, and they, that's what they used to, to make the power with. They had a coal coal-fired boiler over there but uh yeah i mean them guys that told me that he uh he i don't know how many years they said he'd worked there but uh he'd only took two leave of absences from the job the whole time he'd been there and the first one was for, for second world war and the second one was for korea he was a marine and uh i mean and he actually died while he was still employed I mean, he was up, he, well, he's been dead probably, geez, I guess 10, 12 years now, maybe. So he had to be, I mean, what, 75, 80 years old then? Yeah, because it would have been, yeah, I mean, he had to be pushing, he might have been pushing 90. But that's what, that's what brought him happiness and joy, I guess. I mean, that's, he didn't. He didn't have no desire to retire. But I mean, he had it made over yonder. I mean, they no longer allowed him out into the plant to fix stuff. He was, uh, he worked on um, motors. They'd take the motor apart or take the motor loose and swap it out. And they'd take it into the shop for him to work on. He's probably the only one there that knew how to work on that old stuff. <laughs> and then uh, they just ran a, but he, I mean, he was there for, forever you, man 60 years or better you know, i can understand that i mean he, we'd go in every day and mess with the guys you know take as long as he needed for lunch you know it just give him something to do during the day i guess but uh and there was they just ran a thing in the paper around here uh, probably three months ago but uh there's an engineer works at uh uh, one of the chemical plants over there in Hopewell. I mean, he's 90. has no desire to retire. I don't know how he's set up. But, um, I mean, I can understand that. I just never was fortunate to have that. Now, I ain't never daggone laid bricks or did any kind of construction work. Nothing, nothing like that for too long, you know. A little spurts, a little part-time jobs here and there for a couple of months, but that, that has really been that physical, you know. But uh, it's uh, I can understand somebody like that not not didn't having the desire to retire. I mean, it it doesn't enhance their life any kind of ways. What they figure, I imagine. But I mean, it, it, you know, and the thing about retirement too is, hey man, every day is different. I'm not going in and making. 10 tons of yarn every day or you know, 50,000 pounds of, of chemical every day or whatever, you know, every day is different. And I think that's what makes me enjoy it so far is the variety. You know, one day I might be painting, one day I might be cutting grass, one day I might be, you know, studying something, trying to figure out something. You know, or it might be multiple things in one day. 
and it's my choice. That's the thing about retirement. You have the option. You have the choice. You know, that you can go out there and bust your butt all day, or you can take you a break and go down to the river this time of year and catch you a couple squirrels there, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I think that's the thing I enjoy about it the most. I think that's what makes every day enjoyable, and I look forward to every day, the variety of it. I thought about this a few times over the since I've been a retired, it maybe hey man, maybe I got this daggone retirement thing all wrong. You know, you see so many images of people, <laughs> of people really enjoying it's not all of themselves, or they appear to be. You know, maybe they do. I don't know. But traveling all over, or starting a business, or whatever. Now, a lot of times I say, man, that I mean, that looks pretty interesting. You know, I might like to try that. But then when I look at what it would take. <laughs> the effort, <laughs> the money. You know, I'm thinking, ah, it ain't worth all that to me. So I don't know. <clears throat> it's just kind of odd. Well, y'all take care. Y'all enjoy what's left of your week, anyways. I made a video yesterday. I just didn't like it and I trashed it. The perks of being retired. <laughs> y'all take care. We'll talk to y'all later.